Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna do a quick video on how to put heat sinks back on chips. Uh, this isn't something that I was planning on covering but I actually had a couple of people um, message me recently and uh, having some problems with putting heat sinks back on so uh, here we go. Alright so as you see this is a board a board that I, oops, that I worked on uh, replaced like a whole bunch of chips in this area as well as this guy right here and this guy right in the middle there and so in order to access that chip I had to remove those two um, those two heat sinks right here so I could get my my uh, tweezer in there and now everything's working we got all my ASICs detected and now I gotta put those back on so I think what we're gonna do is zoom you guys right in and hopefully you guys can really uh, see what's happening. Uh, I don't think it's worth using the microscope for this, but all right. So if we look at uh, those three chips, so that chip is fairly flat. There's no like real solder uh, sticking sticking up or anything. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, same thing with that one, fairly flat. This one, you see the the, the core of the chip is a little rough, and that chip. Uh, maybe could be replaced, but there's still plenty of copper on it and a lot of uh, a lot of solder, so I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And that one, I uh, on purpose, I left a little bit of a solder spike sticking up, and so that's gonna make us have to use another technique uh, to put the heat sink on. So, so one of the one of the ways I do it. All right, let's talk about the the air the air station first. So. Uh, personally, I like to use the bigger, bigger nozzle, right? Like it's not much smaller than than uh, than the, the the wand itself, but just a little bit smaller. So I like to use that one personally. But if you have like a square one, just a little bit smaller too, that works. Or if you want to use something like really small, uh, like this, for example, then that also works. Um, you know, it just might take a little bit longer um, to get enough enough air on there. But basically, uh, first thing you want to do is make sure that your heat sinks are fairly clean or clean enough that you are able to uh, put them on the board. If you're working with a heat sink like this guy, for example, that that um, came off a chip and took a piece of the chip with it, then you're gonna need to heat that heat sink and just get that off of there uh, because obviously that's gonna prevent the heat sink from sitting flush on the chip so but as you can see in our case these are the four heat sinks that I plan on using and they still have some solder on them and you really don't need that much so that's plenty so let's not add any solder and that should be just fine Okay, so what I use for temperature for my Air One, I use 340 degrees, about 60% uh, air. And so in the case of when you have a chip that's really nice and flat, like this one right here, or like those three really, all, all the chips that I have here except for, for this one. But what I can do, so the board is cold right now obviously, I can just position the chip, position the heatsink I mean, as good as I can and I can really take my time and line it up and on an S17 plus specifically or all, all the boards I guess but you want to make sure you give yourself enough space uh, between the two heat sinks in case you need to go back between the heat sinks to access the test points and whatnot but uh, so this is too forward so I'm gonna pull it back a little bit right there I can see my test points in the front here, so that's good and accessible. Then I'm going to turn on my air. And then, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that on camera, but... So I just pointed it at the heatsink. And I'm trying not to point it at anything else. And then, at one point... You should see the heatsink move. There it goes. It moved a little bit. I don't know if that was if that uh, showed up on camera or not, but so basically after it moved, I just leave the heat on for maybe you know five seconds, just to make sure that everything is nice and melted down there, and 
from the point that the insect move, I do not touch it, right? Because, um, so the solder on top of the chip is gonna be melted, but if you kept your air on it for too long, then the solder under the pins of the chip itself may also be a little soft or melted. And then if you touch the heatsink, then you might, you take the chance of moving the whole chip. So that is not something you wanna do. Uh, so now I let it cool for a few seconds. I will gently touch it and this one's solid so I can give it a little wiggle and that is good. Alright so that was the first technique as you see easy peasy right? So I'm gonna take my uh, other heat sink that goes in that same spot. So the bottom is fairly flat, the chip itself is fairly flat. I'm gonna line it up roughly where I want it. Well, not roughly, I'm gonna line it up exactly where I want it. Understanding that it might move a little bit. And then just do the same thing. Wait, was that the right one? I don't think it was the right one, Never mind. That was a thinner one for the, the last row there. This is the right one. So I was telling you there's not a whole lot of difference in the width of those two rows. So good thing I caught that while it was still cold. Now we'll wait for it to see it move. There it goes. Sat down flush. Leave it on a couple more seconds, and we're good, and we don't touch it, and we just let it solidify again. I'm going to gently move the board, make sure we are in frame. Keep waiting for it to be hopefully solid again, then I'm going to gently touch it. It seems we are okay. Be a little bit more aggressive. Yep, we're good. All right, so the last one we can do using that technique. Gonna take that one, gonna line it up. That's something I didn't mention, I guess. Uh, especially important for those those smaller heat sinks. So you can you can see like the the. Uh, I don't know what to call it, like the, the mark that the chip was on when it was on, right? So the this heatsink isn't much bigger, like the base of this heatsink isn't much bigger than uh, than the top of the chip itself. So you want to make sure you center it as much as possible and then that's gonna get the best, uh, the best contact and the most surface area and ultimately it's gonna be the best thing for heat transfer. So on this one I feel like it's a little bit too far back. You can probably see that too. I'm just gonna turn it just so it's more comfortable for me to work. But so as you can tell that heat sink, so this is the one that we just put in, and uh, it's too far, too far that way, right? It's too far to the right, so uh, I'm just gonna use my needle nose and then just Set it back down a little bit more in line. Oh, we're not solid yet. So if you said I had just started releasing the pressure and I could tell that the heat sink was still moving, so that means we're still too hot. I'm gonna try again, release slowly. Everything seems to be solid, so I just give it a little wiggle, and that is solid. Okay, and that looks much, much better if you compare it to, to the rest of the, of the heat sinks. Like, it's not perfect, you can always be nitpicky, but um, when I see like boards that, 
you know, the heat sinks are turned like almost 45 degrees, then that, that really bothers me. Okay, so next, last, uh, last chip. So that little dot that you see there, on there, that's, that's actually a little spike of solder, and I did that on purpose. And so what that does is that I can't use that same technique. Well, maybe I could, but in some cases, see, I can't really, like, I can't really judge properly where the heat sink would fall when it sits down, and I can't really balance that heat sink because there's a big spike underneath it. So, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, well, turns out it's pretty similar to what I was doing with that last heat sink, but I just grab the the middle fin with uh, have some small needle nose pliers. Uh, I know a lot of people try to grab it with tweezers. Uh, personally, I don't like that because that kind of thing happened. Like it's it's just too slippery, in my opinion. You don't really have a good a good grip on it. Maybe this way, but then you have to be sideways. And anyway, if you're if you're comfortable with that with the tweezers, then uh, go for it. Obviously, but for me, I find what I what I what works really nice is uh, needle nose pliers, and and the pliers have like this serrated part. And then when you put that, um, when you put that metal fin, like right in, in one of those teeth, then it's really, it holds really well. And it prevents it from turning. So that is good. All right, so what I'm gonna do, oops, what I'm gonna do for this one, um, same concept really. So I take the air, I'm gonna preheat it for, you know, 10, 15 seconds maybe. This is a small heat sink, so it doesn't need a whole lot of preheating, but, and then after that, I'm gonna put it straight on, and then I realize that my my hand's gonna be in the way of of the camera. But uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. And then uh, yeah, I just hold it there until uh, while heating it still from the side. Maybe if I zoom out a little bit for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna like I said preheat it. Put it on there and then keep heating it until I find or until I feel that the solder is uh, melting and I feel the heat sink sitting flush on the chip. And from there, I can just uh, I just hold it until it solidifies again, and then that's gonna be it. Okay, so here we go. I keep heating it. I position it in line with the other ones, right about there, I wiggle it, and then I feel it flush, so I take the air off to make sure I don't melt the solder of the chip itself, and then you don't have to apply crazy pressure, you just want to hold it there, hold it flat. I'm going to turn off the air. And slowly release the pressure. It seems to be solid. And there we go. So, I realized that my hand was in the way for that last part, but uh, that's all I could do, unfortunately. And as you can see, well, we got some fairly straight-ish heat sinks. And, uh... I can't even tell which ones we we replaced. That's not the one. There you go. So uh, hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, I know it was uh, short and sweet, and uh, maybe just a uh, just a video on uh, me showing you how I put my heat sinks back on. Um, of course, there's many different ways to skin a cat, and whatever works for you works for you. But uh, if you have problems putting heat sinks back on. Uh, things to remember is that uh, you know line them up as best as you can and don't leave your air on the heatsink for too long or you will melt uh, the solder under the chip and then you're gonna move the chip and then it's gonna cause a lot more work for yourself so um, okay there you go so have a good one thanks